Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I am going to talk about how our natural state is bliss. And this might be a bit controversial because I'm sure most of you are thinking, but if our natural state is bliss, how come we're so infrequently blissful? And the reason for that is, well, first of all, I want to just demonstrate how our natural state is bliss. And the way that I want to demonstrate that is just for you to have a look at your life and think of the times when nothing was bothering you and nothing was stressing you and nothing was upsetting you in any way. When everything is all going well, then you naturally fall into a state of bliss. The only time that you're not in a state of bliss is when you're experiencing things that go against what you see as a blissful state. Now, what I would like to put to you is that that blissful state never goes away. It is always there, and that it just gets muddied and you're unable to see it when other stuff comes up. A bit like the sun. The sun never stops shining, it's just it's quite often hidden by the clouds, especially if you live in England. <laughs> Although actually for the last month it's been fairly nice. Now over the last week, um, as we sort of get into our fifth and sixth week of lockdown here in the UK, I've noticed that there's a bit of a pattern that for most of the time I'm very blessed, I'm really lucky. Um, the whole coronavirus thing hasn't impacted me too badly. But that I've noticed just generally my my sense of well-being goes up and down, it dips. But not just that, I've also noticed with friends and family and um, people who aren't necessarily in my home, that they also go through times of real struggle. Struggle with being them on their own at home and trapped inside their, their houses. And I know that there's a, a Buddhist saying or proverb, and I don't remember the exact words, so this is not a quote, but it goes along the lines to say that one man's prison is another man's palace. And what it means by that is that if you imprisoned most people in a small cell, it would be absolute hell on earth. But for a Buddhist who is at peace with themselves, who is um, in presence and at one, then a prison cell is limitless and is not an imprisonment at all. And that's kind of what's been coming to me over the last week as we, as I said, enter our fifth or sixth week of uh, lockdown here in the UK. That for some of us, being um, locked down in our houses is absolute bliss, whilst for others it is complete hell. And that's got me thinking about the state of presence and that when we're fully present, when we're at one with our surroundings and we're at peace within ourselves, then we're in a state of bliss. But that for most people this doesn't last very long because our thoughts come in, our emotions come in, our fears come in, and it disrupts that state of bliss. So for the last few weeks, um, well, a few weeks ago, I was inspired to share the Ho'oponopono clearing method with people. And I've been doing it every single week. Um, just doing a simple clearing on a Tuesday and on a Friday I do half an hour of a little workshop just interacting with people and answering questions on it. But it's made me really deeply think about it and because I'm sharing it and teaching about it um, I'm using it much more consciously in my daily life. And I'm very aware that when I'm at peace with myself, when I'm at that state of zero, at complete presence, then there isn't anything bothering me. And I'm also aware of things when they bubble up and how it comes from the subconscious. It's all my old fears, all my old anxieties. They, they just replay on a loop. But because I have this clearing tool, I'm much more able to bring myself back into presence. And so I wanted to share a couple of clearing tools, well, actually three different clearing tools with you, um, so that you can, hopefully they'll help you through these times. And it's not just in these times, it's in any time. It's just that this particular time is so peculiar that it becomes so much more apparent to me. So the first one is the Ho'oponopono method, which I've just mentioned. And I'll put links to all of these down below, along with the sessions that I'm doing and everything else. So the Ho'oponopono method is um, you use the phrase, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, 
and thank you. And when you say I love you, well, for me anyway now, when I first started saying it, I had resistance to the I'm sorry and please forgive me. But um, I ho'oponopono that and I've eventually got to this. But now when I say that I love you, it's for me, it's connecting to all that is. It's I love you and reconnecting to that state of bliss and peace and presence. And the more I use it, the more I connect to that space. When I say I'm sorry, I'm saying I'm sorry for all of my wrong thinking. And the more that I use it, the more aware I am of how that wrong thinking comes in. It disrupts the peace of the presence that is there all the time. And when I say I'm sorry, there's almost a relaxing and a giving up of that patterned thinking and behaving and emotions. Um, and then the please forgive me comes in, and which is more of a release. And the thank you, which seals it all off. And I'm sharing it because it's what's helped me to keep coming back and keep stepping into presence so that I can remain happy and blissful um, through this prolonged period. Now there's two other clearing methods I'm going to share with you and although at the moment I'm more focused on Ho'oponopono, I have at times focused on both of these as well. So I'm sharing them with you because one or other might suit you best at this time. The other one is an access consciousness one. And there's actually a clearing phrase, and I'll put the link to the actual phrase. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, because I haven't said it for a while, so I hope I get it right. It is, destroy and uncreate everything, good, bad, right, wrong, pod, pock, all minds, shorts, boys and beyonds. Now, if you want to understand a little bit more about it, then follow the link and I'm sure they'll explain it to you. But it's not really meant to make sense to your conscious mind because it's working at a very subconscious level to clear the impatterned thinking and the ingrained wrong thinking that you've been thinking most of your life. Now the other one that I'm going to share with you is by a lady called Chrissy Marie Sheldon and hers is delete it and uncreate it across all time, space and reality which again is about deleting and clearing the wrong thinking that you have in your head. For me, the main purpose of these clearing statements is to, to disrupt that ingrained in pattern thinking and feeling that you have established over years and years and years of thinking through the same patterns that you do every single day. And just by disrupting it, just by breaking the habit, you open up to something new. So, I mean, I believe and I've experienced the energy and the power of these clearing statements, but if nothing else, just disrupting the pattern is a huge massive breakthrough because the more you think the same thoughts the more ingrained they become the more you create the neural pathways along those ways of thinking and your thinking creates your emotions and your emotions create your actions and the more you fight your reality so during this lockdown the more you struggle with what's happening the more anxious, the more upset, the more pain you cause yourself, the more able you are to let go of all of that and to be much more present and open up to just being, the more at peace, the more blissful and the more happy you will be. And I just want to step into that just one little bit, is how to become present. So I've spoken about the clearing statements and how to break that thinking cycle and start opening up. But I just want to talk about presence a little bit more because presence is when you step out of your thoughts and your mind and your head. It's about being aware of everything that is in your surroundings. So when we think, our thoughts are focused in a certain direction and a certain, at a certain thing. It could be frustration about the situation, it could be anxiety about something, it might be to do with a relationship and something that's not going right in a relationship. And when that happens, that takes up a lot of energy and it causes, as soon as you go into your thoughts and you start churning them around, it causes emotions. And those emotions aren't always pleasant. They could be stressful, distressing, angry, upsetting, whatever it is. Now, when you become present, you step out of that conversation in your head and you step into just being with all that is. Now, for me, how I do that, and this is not the only way, but I'm just sharing one way with you, is first of all, to acknowledge the thoughts going on in my head. 
But then for me, what I do is I do it through my breath. And it doesn't even have to be any specific breathing technique, but I'll stick some links below to some breathing techniques should you want to use them. And I just become super aware of my breath. I start noticing the feel of it as it comes through my nose, the sensation of my body as it expands to open and welcome to the breath, and then how it sort of relaxes, and as it does so, it pushes the air out of my, my nose or mouth, and how that feels again as it rushes out. And once I've done that a number of times, so that I'm no longer caught up in the conversation with my mind, I then take my awareness beyond my physical form, and into whichever atmosphere or area I happen to be in. So if I'm in a room, I then take my awareness into the energy in the room, the light in the room. I allow all of my senses just to be with what is in the room. The sounds, the smells, the feeling of where it is that I'm sitting, the temperature, and not to have a conversation about it. As soon as you start making what is right or wrong, you've gone straight back up into your head again. And then you've just got to bring yourself back down into your breathing, into your body, and then take yourself back out again. Now, this is like any form of exercise. When you first start doing it, those moments of presence will be small. But the more often you do it, the more lasting that presence will be until you know that that presence is the only release and relief from all the noise and the stuff that's going on in your head. And when you start learning to be able to do that, you'll realise that that bliss is there all the time. It's there for you to access, it's completely free, nobody's going to charge you for it, and it's there for you all the time, anytime, anywhere. You can access it when you're queuing to go into the supermarket, you can access it before you go to sleep or when you wake up, you can access it if, I mean, like, if, like me, I've got really into doing my yoga during this lockdown. Um, and when I'm doing my yoga poses, um, I have try now to become more and more present while I'm doing it. You can access it when you're cooking or washing up or cleaning. Um, at any point in time, it's there for you to access. And not only is it a source of bliss, but if you're having any challenges or struggles or worries during this time, the more you open up to this presence, the more you'll find the answers come to you. Um, I can't, ex well, I could explain it, but I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm going to leave that for another video because that's another conversation. I've really enjoyed my time with you here today. And if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and like and share because that helps me to grow the audience and to give more value to more people. I've also created a free course, um, which is five steps to self-awareness, towards self-awareness. And I'll put a link to that down below as well. And if you want any more resources, you can always find them on my website, www.britannia.com. B-R-I-T-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.